What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy MM2K back again with another video. Hey, look, I hope everybody enjoyed their day off for most of us in the continental United States. It was Columbus Day, you know what I'm saying? So regardless of what your politics are, if you got the day off from work, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, <laughs> with that being said, um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. And I might do a separate video on this uh, later. Um, but I want to let y'all know that come November, November 2019, MM2K content is going to be revamped, okay? Uh, first and foremost, on the broadband bully side, uh, me and Z's working on something. I'm just going to I'm gonna leave it at that. And y'all are going to enjoy this. Uh, what I highly suggest that you guys do is follow me and Z on twitch.tv. You know what I'm saying? I'm at twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000 Z is at uh, twitch.tv forward slash next gen 720 because uh, we got something special coming there. In addition to that, PNTS, PNTS network is coming with a fully fleshed um, discord channel. All right. And y'all are going to love it because it's going to be fully interactive with all the bells and whistles, right? Um, and we got some familiar faces within the gaming community that are going to help run that. So more to come on that. Um, and as far as the hard knock digital culture is concerned, which is my Twitch channel, hndc.live is where you can find all my live streams and stuff like that and content there as well. Um, along with my Twitch uh, channel, we're going to also be revamping some things. The NRR, the NRO podcast is coming back. Um, we're also going to move forward with the anime podcast and the martial arts podcast. We're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's on that. All right. And then follow uh, all the people in PNTS, broadband bullies, stuff is going to be revamped. But the reason why I made this video wasn't just for that. It was primarily because um, over the last several days, I haven't really talked on this and I wanted to go over it real quick and give you my thoughts. First and foremost, let's talk about it. Um, Sean Layton is gone over at Sony. Then you have Mike Yabarro gone. You had a couple of people depart that worked on Halo on the Microsoft side. And you had a whole bunch of layoffs at EU office for PlayStation. All right. So all that happening in the prism and to your boy MM2K, which one is worse? Um, I want to tell you which one I feel is worse and I want to tell you why. Um, let me give you a little bit of background. So early September on a Monday, I don't have the actual dates in front of me. Um, but early September on a Monday, we were notified. Well, we know that early September on a Monday that Sean Layton was gone. There wasn't any official details given on what happened. Was he lick or whatever? But I can tell you due to my Fortune 500 experience that what happens is on a Monday when you're making those type of personnel cuts, all right, when you're purging people from your payroll and things of that nature, it usually happens on a Monday and there's an official statement made to the staffing. So-and-so is no longer with the company. And if this, if it's a high profile one, what the media will do is just say, hey, you know, especially if it was if it's one that could be quote unquote controversial in nature, they will say, hey, we appreciate the person's time with us, blah, 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 blah. But they're no longer with us. Um, in addition to that, that person will honor that and will not say a peep because part of their golden parachute, if they are high up the ladder or part of their compensation package requires them not to say a word. So you will not hear anything from them for a very long time. <laughs> Hence why we haven't heard anything from Sean Layton because that would mess up his compensation and he's not gonna mess up his compensation for a few fanboys on Twitter. So you had that happen. In addition to that, you had layoffs at Sony EU that threw the people at Sony EU off. They were not given such a big golden parachute, so they're gonna run their mouth. <laughs> they ran their mouths to a couple of publications that announced their displeasure and their dismay over some things that have happened 
that they felt like were in spite of the EU offices. Jim Ryan's newfound focus on what's ha- happening in uh, uh, America um, and all other stuff. So that's what happened here on the Sony side. What happened on the um, Microsoft side is that Mike Ball, in contrast to what happened with Sean Layton, made an announcement. Hey, look, my time's up here. I've had a fantastic journey, but I'm leaving. Um, I'm going to let you guys know on what's going on here soon. Um, I can tell you firsthand that when it happens in that fashion, that the person is leaving at their own fruition. There is no compensation NDA package agreement. If they're leaving at their own fruition, there is no hard will between the two entities or no potential hard will that that is at risk of being expressed. Um, in light of the company is concerned. So you go out and give out a tweet. And as far as we know, Mike Yabari, since he's made that announcement, is still, days after that, is still giving out Microsoft Game Pass subscription. So, you know, so again, he's he, he left. He left. Um, then we had the two departures at Halo, all right? And people are saying, oh, Halo's in trouble, Halo's in trouble. But again, it's very clear that those people willingly left and they went to Midwinter Games, all right? So they were not let go in contrast to what's happened here at Sony. Now, in lieu of that, those that hear me express it that way, and those are just the facts. Those are just the facts as far as the nature of the departures were concerned. And I'm adding to those facts the, what likely happened. So the way that I've explained that, it would be reason to fathom that I think that the departures of Sony are worse, or worse, but they're not. Here's why. Um, I think that at Sony and Jack Trenton, who also stepped down, had announced this. That um, he's a former head. He was he had Sean Layton's position before Sean Layton took it over. That the way Sony operates is they operate like a big cog, and the people that work at Sony are just little mini wheels at that cog. So you can replace. A few wheels, half of the wheels, all the wheels. The main thing is that main big cog, which is Sony. Sony does not care about individual contributions or other stuff. Everybody, once they step through Sony's threshold, knows that they're operating solely for the betterment of Sony, okay? So even though Sean Layton may have had a style and his style class with Jim Ryan or whatever, it, it, it don't matter. Everybody was working within the prism of Sony. They were just mini wheels within the main cog of Sony. So regardless, they let go people at EU or they let go even as someone at Sean Layton's level, it's not going to be that disruptive because the way that they're structured, individual contributions don't mean much because everything that you have to do has to be within the sole benefit primarily. And exponentially, you know what I'm saying? Expeditiously, I mean, excuse me. Uh, it has to be to the benefit of Sony. On the flip side, Microsoft does reward individual contributions. They got photo ops and picture these people and highlighting these people and these people on social media. So it's so they focus more or less on what you're all about and what how they can utilize what you're about to, to make the Microsoft brand better. And what I can tell you as far as Mike Yabarro is concerned, not the two people at, at, at Halo, but how Mark Yabarro is concerned. Mark Yabarro was the last dissenting voice, quote unquote, at Microsoft. He's a no-nonsense guy and he lets you know how he feels. He's not, he's not a rude person, but the people that I know that are very close to Mark Yabarro let you know, will let you know that Mark Yabarro was no, was no BS. You know what I'm saying? He is a competitive spirited guy. And unlike some of the twists and turns that Microsoft or Xbox in particular was making to, to, to smoothen out some of those competitive edges, Mike was the last competitive sore thumb, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? He loved what he did at the company. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he was different <laughs> from a lot of the personalities there as far as what his drives were and, 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 and what motivated him. So having that last somewhat of a dissenting voice leave the company, I don't think is the best thing. You know what I'm saying? For a company like Xbox being that they're battling internally with trying to um, connect with its core. They want to create a different core and they think 
that they can create that core by skipping over the current core and they don't realize that they don't have the ability to do that they have to recapture the current core and then they can transition and without having mike there to to, to try to have some type of voice in that i don't think it's a good thing also uh the people that left halo they didn't have intricate roles as far as the success of Halo, but I think it it, it, it speaks volumes that these two people want to leave Microsoft or Xbox on Xbox's biggest game since its existence. I mean, Halo Infinite means more than Xbox than any other title ever because of the state that Xbox is in as far as mind share and public perception. They got to turn that around more than ever before. See, when they were the new kid on the block, there was a lot of enthusiasm and, 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 and you know, um, positive feelings about them, you know what I'm saying, because of what they could provide. Well, we already know what they're about and they got to turn things around. So the fact that these people want to leave what reasonably is Microsoft's biggest studio there, 343 with over 500 employees that make Microsoft's biggest game, which is Halo. They want to leave before the launch of that game and go work at Midwinter, which is making some indie game that looks like Remnant. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be a bad game, but nothing stands out about that game. You know what I'm saying? It speaks volumes. So I think that the, the, even though they're willingly leaving the company, why? We know why it's going on. Sony's trying to cut costs. They're trying to reach that $60, 24 month high uh, stock price and they're, they're cutting costs. That's why they're doing what they're doing. But people willingly, those people didn't want to leave Sony, but these people willingly want to leave Microsoft. Think about that. So again, I think that speaks volumes. That's just my thoughts on the whole matter. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. And like always, hey, look, I'm on the corner of every boulevard. Follow your boy, Twitch, Mixer, everywhere. Follow the Broadband Bullies. Follow PNTS Network. We got some great things coming. And with that said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace. <laughs>